Hi everybody. Lesson 16 homework on page 67 of your Succeed book. Getting into some really fun um, ideas in math about patterns and shapes and all of that. We're going to be shading in, first of all, to copy their design and then to make a design of our own. So you're going to need colored pencils or crayons or something. You could use um, just a regular pencil for this part, um, but it'll be more fun if you use a colored pencil anyway. So we need to be very careful to make sure that we are exactly copying what they have. The whole top row is empty. First two squares are empty, and then it looks like we're coloring in one, two, three, four squares. So two empty ones, and then I'm coloring in here. One, two, three, four. Now on the next row down, there are three empty, and then one, two colored in and then three empty. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. The next row is exactly the same. Kind of looks like a giant letter I, doesn't it? And then the last row, well, the bottom row is completely empty, but the last row of our design is just like that first one, two empty, one, two, three, four spaces full. So one, two, three, four colored in. So the empty space and the colored space is exactly the same on this one and on that one. I'm going to change colors. I thought I had blue. We're going to do the same thing here a little bit more complicated of a drawing. Again, the top row is completely empty. In the second row, we're coloring in one, two, three, four, five, six boxes, starting with this very first one. So one, two, three, four, five, Six. Now, remember, we are doing math, not art. So we don't need it to be perfectly filled in. We are just making sure that we are copying precisely. All right, on the next row, we have this um, a couple that are empty in the middle. So the first one is colored in, and then the second one is not. And then we have one two colored in, and this one is not, and then this one is colored in. And it looks like the next row is exactly the opposite. The first row is blank, the second box is filled in, the next two are empty, that box is filled in, and then the rest are empty. What about this one? Is it the same as what we've done before? It is. It's like this second row here. So we're coloring in one, leaving blank, coloring in two, leaving it blank, and coloring in that last box. And then the bottom row is just like the first row. We're coloring in one, two, three, four, five, six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we made the same uh, design that they made by being careful to copy exactly which ones they colored in. I'm going to change colors again. There's my purple, maybe. 
All right, so again, top row completely empty. Now looking carefully here, that is not a full square. Huh. So one, two, three, four, and five are completely filled in. So I'm going to count over one, two, three, and I'm going to fill in four and five. But now look at three. Three is only half. And then the same thing with six. Six is only half. That's a cool looking design. So now on this third row, we have two empty, one filled, two empty, one filled, two empty. So two. And then I'm filling this one in, two empty, filling this one in, and those two are empty. Not the first square, but the second square, and then empty, and then filled in here, filled in here, empty, and filled in there. This one is just like our second one up there. The third box is colored in. Four and five are empty. And the sixth box is colored in. And then here at the bottom, it's just like at the top. One, two, three, four, and five are filled in. Three is half and six is half. So by counting our squares and looking very carefully to be precise, we are able to copy their designs. Now on page 68, we are going to create two different designs of our own. Now, I'm going to create a design, and you are welcome to do it with me, but you can also make your very own. Yours doesn't need to look like mine. I, on their page, they always left a, at least one row completely empty. I think I am going to do like an X on this first one. So I'm going to color in one and then two and then three and then four and then five and then six. Oh, it doesn't go all the way over. I think then I'm going to start here instead of over here. I think I'm going to start on that same square. So then I'm going to color in this one, and then this one, and then, oopsie, this one. Well, that didn't come out exactly the way I thought it would. It's got these four boxes colored in in the middle. I still kind of like it, though. We don't always know how things are going to turn out when we start them. Kind of like it. All right, on um, this one... Let's see. On this one, I'm going to try to do kind of a curve. So I'm going to go into the middle. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do four and five. And then in the next row, I'm going to do three and six. Hmm, 
And should I come straight down or should I go out one more? I think I'm going to go out one more. And I'm going to do that on two rows. And then come in and come in again. Kind of a round pattern, right? And then maybe, since we can do these halves, maybe I'll put a little diamond right in the center. With some half squares. <laughs> okay. Like I said, your designs do not need to look like my designs. Do not think you have to copy what I did. You are free to do whatever design you would like to. Now down here, we're going to create a tessellation. A tessellation is a shape or um, pattern design that repeats. So I am going to do, I think I'm going to do a five, like on the dice. One, two, three, four, five. Now, with this one, like with these up at the top, yours does not need to look like mine. You can choose whatever you would like to in this block. But whatever you draw in this block, you're then going to draw again. So this is the next block right here. So again, I would be doing that same five pattern. And then here is my next three by three grid, right? Nine squares. So if you want to do the same pattern as I'm doing, that's fine. You can do your own pattern, but every three blocks, you're going to repeat it so that it tessellates. This pattern will repeat. So and then here's my next block of three by three. So one, two, three, four, five, and one more on this row. One, two, three. Four, five. So this pattern can continue forever. It's tessellating. It can continue as long as I have squares. I am going to keep drawing my pattern. One, two, three, four, five. Here I have another block. One, two, three, four, five. Don't panic if you make a mistake. You can't really erase it. Just do your best. That's all you can do. One, two, three, four, Five. As I'm looking at it now, as I look at how my pattern is growing, it doesn't so much look like that five pattern that I started with, that crisscross. It's turning into these other, we see other patterns, other shapes within the tessellation. I'm going to do one more here. 
One, two, three, four, five. I think I should have chosen a sharper pencil. We have one more row of the same pattern. Whatever pattern you did in the first block, you're going to keep doing. One of your own making or doing this one with me is fine too. And I just keep going. One, two, three, four, five, two more. One, two, three, four, five, and finally, one, two, three, four, five. When I look at it now, the white part stands out to me more than the shaded part. So it doesn't look as much to me like those groups of five. Plus, when I have the two fives together, there's twos shaded in there. And where those meet, there's a group of four shaded in. So I don't so much see the pattern that I started with, but you can see the pattern is repeating in this plaid shape across the grid. It's pretty fun, I have to say. We'll have to look at each other's patterns in class. I'll see you next time.